The following program is a paid presentation. The views and or opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the staff and management of KWAM. Happy Saturday, everybody, from the 19 Strong Show. Uh, we have a full studio today. It's a beautiful day in the Bluff City. And if you have some questions for the MPA negotiations team, you can give us a call at 260-5926. We will be opening up the phone lines. Uh, this is Sherry, the host of the 19 Strong Show, uh, show joining me today. Hey, this is Jim. You guys know me. From the Chet Rants, which I'm pretty sure you guys are going to get a little bit about today, because we're going to be talking about negotiations with the city. And you know they're always trying to get two tens for a five, and I I don't ever like to let them get away with it, so uh, we're going to probably air them out a little bit today. Uh, and joining me today, too, is Regala. Hi, everyone. And I'm going to let the negotiation teams introduce themselves and give us whatever little background snippet you want to give you. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Matt Cunningham. I'm the lead negotiator for the Memphis Police Association negotiation team. Uh, I'm a 17-year veteran of the police department, and it's my third negotiations, but my first time leading the team. So I'm happy to be here, and with me is... I'm Officer Justin Cole. I'm with the MPA negotiation team my first year signed on, and I'm happy to be here. Well, thank y'all so much for coming, especially last minute, because I know I got in touch with you yesterday. But I, mean, I just no think problem. I feel like that the, a lot of citizens are starting to wake up to what's going on, and they may have some questions about what's happening out there. And But before we dig in, because sometimes when we dig in, we just completely forget, uh, or not forget, but we just run out of time. Uh, and I want to, again, just tell you about MPA Charitable Foundation. Uh, that is Chet and mine. That is that foundation is just so special to us. And if you are looking for a community service charity that is directed directly at the Memphis area, the MPA Charitable Foundation is for you. Chet and I both give to that. Uh, we give religiously to the toy drive because that's our heart. But they do so much more than that. And you can take a look at mpagivesback.org. And uh, MPA is our sponsor, but the Charitable Foundation is not. This is something that we believe in, and we just want to you to take a look at that because it's another way that the men and women of the police department are giving back to the community and when I say they're giving back they're giving with their time and their money because we got to go on well I got to go with Mike on the toy drive when they delivered the toys and it was an incredible experience and these officers are out there actually giving of their time and money to make Memphis a better place and it's just another way that they're choosing us the citizens of Memphis <laughs> you know, over themselves every single day. And we just appreciate it so much. So if you you want to look at a charity that 100% gives back into this community, into the Memphis area, mpagivesback.org. It's not just the toy drive. They have all kinds of things, and it's not just for police families. They give back to all citizens of Memphis um, in different avenues. So take a look at what they do, and in, in your PayPal, in the little comments, you can say what part of your donation, where you want it to go. So uh, take a look at that, mpagivesback.org, and we just want to say thank you to the men and women, the Memphis Police Association, and the Memphis Police Department for all that you do, including the two sitting in front of us. Thank you so much for everything that you do for the city of Memphis, because we know that there's a lot to it that a lot of people don't understand, so well, thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Uh, yeah, just to piggyback out off that a little bit, Randy will be happy that uh, this year they we tried to give the toy drive, we tried to target um, families that were victims of homicide mm -hmm. last year and uh, and try to help out those those families and especially those kids that uh, that experienced such a tragic event last year. So, uh, yeah, that's a great, great uh Great organization, and that's separate, like you said, from the Memphis Police mm -hmm. Association. So thanks for the plug. Oh, uh, we just I, I loved, and I I did get to go on the toy drive with Randy and to see these kids, um, and it was a it was an eye opener for me as well because you know I live in the burbs, I've never seen some of the reality of some of the families and some of the children that live in our city that the police officers do get to see a lot, and it it really. It said a lot to me that these officers wanted to go back and make sure these kids were taken care of for Christmas. So it was just incredible, and it really it, it furthered my want to push for this organization. So thanks. But, I mean, it's just it's a great it's an, it's incredible what y'all do. I mean, every day you go and you work, but you're still going beyond above and beyond for the community. So, um, but every week we try to plug that because it is something that's near and dear to Chet and my uh, heart. So, uh, but so it's negotiation time as we've been telling everybody, uh, and that is. That is a that's a big deal in our city. If you even if you're you're just now waking up to the fact that we do this every single year, this is not a new thing. Uh, but over the past few years, we've seen uh, just some changes going on with the negotiations and how the city is is responding to negotiations. So I'm just you know I guess we could just open up there. Where are we at right now? Uh, right now, uh, we've got 
several things going on. We've got uh, the the mayor's office and the city council are two different entities uh, that that we are d having to deal with at the same time, which is unique to this year. Uh, normally, the way things are supposed to go, per the the impasse ordinance, which spells out the way negotiations occur with the city, is that uh, we sit down during the month of March and meet with the mayor or his representative, and uh, we we have open discussions back and forth across the negotiation table to uh, to discuss uh, the changes in the MOU or additions that we want to make. And uh, and then at the end of April, if we reach or at the end of March, if we reach an agreement, then uh, then the contract is presented in the mayor's budget and everybody goes home happy. If we don't reach an agreement, we go to impasse uh, and then we take our each side takes its last best offer and proposes it to the city council. Uh, there's a impasse committee that's selected from members of the council. They they have a hearing. We make our final our last best offers. Uh, they make a decision, make a recommendation to full council, and full council either accepts it or votes it down. So that's the way things are laid out now. Uh, there's a proposal to change it, mm -hmm. which is a pretty big deal. Um, yep. In fact, it's huge. Uh, huge. And uh, this would be more like the instead of impasse, this would be like the King Joffrey committee. <laughs> from Game of Thrones, right? You just come out there and go, no, we don't want that. And then they just take what they want because you will never see the city. I've been down there enough, and I've argued with them, and I've called, you know, Jerry Springer Conrad. I've called him out enough that I know that These are comments not from the Memphis Police Association negotiation. <laughs> no, you guys, you guys know this is me, and, you know, I don't care. Um, but, you know, you've been down there long enough to know that they never come out with anything. Usually what they'll do is, is they'll come out with this big, huge thing, and it's a big scandal or it's a big, huge idea, and that's really detracting from what they're going to do. Like with this new list of people who's not allowed to come down to City Hall. Well, that blew up, dun, dun, dun. and everybody was like, oh, I'm on the list. I'm not on the list. And, blah, blah, blah. and the whole time they were like going, yeah, but we're going to change the impasse. We're going to change it. We're going to change it. And that's right. what they do. It's all sleight of hand, and they never change anything to benefit its employees. As a matter of fact, 99.9% .9 of the time, if somebody messes up in the city administration, let's just say they, oh, I don't know, don't contribute their amount of, of the uh, pension they're supposed to contribute, and it's actually less than what they would have to contribute if they had to pay into Social Security. It's a quarter of a percent less. Or if they decide to completely refinance the debt, double the payment, extend the time, they go, well, uh, we need to deduct pay from the work it doesn't spread out along the 640,000 Memphians because that doesn't get re-election you know if you have to have a tax increase or, or raise money from the citizenry that doesn't go well to be get re-elected so they go well these people depend on us for their livelihood let's just deduct their pay well what are they gonna do we run the impasse so right. it, it's kind of a it's, it's always a sleight of hand thing and it's never to make Memphis better it's always to make the council's buddies, friends, people who work with them, the business side of the city, Chamber the of Chamber Commerce. of Commerce yeah, is always Memphis involved. Tomorrow. So it's yes. it's always, you know what, if you're a Memphian and you got eight quadrillion dollars in your pocket and you want to build stuff, you're good. You're good. But if you're actually out there going to Kroger and you have to go to Kroger and use your buddy in the car to provide suppressive fire for you to get to the grape aisle, this isn't working for you. <laughs> They're not right. out there for you guys. That's right. Well, so the, okay, the impasse comes from the 1978 agreement, correct? That's after. correct. Yeah, uh, as a result of the 1978 strike, police and fire strike, uh, the uh, the city council came up with the impasse ordinance, which mm -hmm. is the the law that governs how uh, negotiations take place. Uh, that law is in place that says that employees of the city of Memphis give up their right to strike. To but in return for the giving up that right to strike, there must be what the, the term is a dispute me resolution mechanism. So there must be a dispute resolution mechanism in place to uh, to where we can sit down and talk about problems. Uh, hence the negotiation mm -hmm. table. Um, the the proposed ordinance, the repeal, is uh, it it does away with all that. Um, the way the the proposed ordinance is written, uh, the mayor would present his budget by March first. Uh, the unions, all 13 labor unions with the city would have 10 days to review that budget. If we don't like something in that budget, then we have the opportunity to declare impasse. I don't know how you declare impasse when there haven't been any negotiations, but if we don't like the budget under the proposal, then we... You mean the entire budget, that big binder? The entire 700-page, yes, correct. Uh, yeah. You got 10 days to look at yeah, that. Yeah, 10 days to look at it. And uh, if you if you want to dispute something wow. in that budget, then you you declare impasse, and then it goes to the council. Uh, another... Can we declare that now? <laughs> well, luckily, this hasn't 
passed yet. Let's let's, let's well, wait, can, can we preemptively uh, say we declare? They wouldn't have even been able to hand it to me. They'd have been like, "Here's your like." Right, 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 right. Right. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. That's all right. So uh, so then at, at that point under the proposal, the uh, the once impasse is declared, the city council, I, excuse me, the unions, all thirteen unions, will be considered by one committee. Not right now, each union has its own committee if, if impasse is declared. So w- there would be one committee. Uh, one of the three count, the impasse count committee members would be picked by the 13 unions. One would be picked by the mayor. And then those two people would pick the third person on the committee. Uh, the, at second reading, the, the three-person committee would make a recommendation to council at second reading of the budget and at third reading of the budget the full council could undo whatever that recommendation is do whatever they want and in fact they could line item pick from each offer so what's the point right there's that there's no negotiation and it would be and the the most detrimental language in the proposal is that the the impasse is limited to economic items that are defined as wage and incentive pay so you can you can contest your wage, your base wage. You can contest your incentive pay for police. It's like shift differential, mm-hmm. things like that. Uh, beyond that, there's that nothing else can be considered. Uh, and there's no obligation in the proposal for the city to recognize any non-economic language. So vacation days out the window, you know, it, anything like that or would would go out of the MOU. So mm-hmm. it basically does away with the contract. Sick time. Right. Bids. Bid systems. So what's know. the point of having a, a memo of understanding with the... That's our question. We, there, what would be the point? There, there's no obligation for them to honor it, it with the, the proposed language in the ordinance. So that's that's a huge So ba- basically we give them the legal route for them to do what they've done to city employees in the past. You know, because before it's been disputed whether they were allowed to, to take these cuts because of your... Because of our MOU, exactly. But now this would give them the legal avenue to do it. Right, because and there, anytime we, they want, and we would have no recourse. We would, we couldn't go to court and say, "Look, the city's violating a contract," because there would be no obligation for them to stick with the contract. Well, right. I mean, like I said, it's two tens for five. No matter what, they're always trying to hustle you down there, and they've got. I don't know what four hundred and something lawyers that they used, or something. I mean, it's, it's a, a ridiculous I, amount well, of lawyers. I mean, yeah. they, if, if they've contracted at one time with a lawyer, they can't be used. I, I don't know. I, I, no, I'm, no, I'm thinking. I'm thinking that's how it works if, because they can say, "Well, I have to recuse myself because I've represented the city." And from my understanding, they've been collecting lawyers. I mean, this is uh, we've heard this, and this is not MPA. This is this is Sherry saying that she's heard that this has happened. So, which they do seem to put a lot more lawyers on the payroll every single year. So, part time attorneys too. So they've got quite a legal division. I, I, uh, they do. <laughs> so, Alan Wade himself is a complete legal division. Uh, <laughs> love that guy. Uh, but it wow. Um, but I mean, and, that, and this is sponsored by Kim Conrad and Ford, right? Right. Kim Conrad what? made the proposal, uh, and Edmund Ford. I don't know. Edmund wow. Ford uh, was the one who seconded it. I so. was very surprised to hear Ford was on it because of the work that his family did in the original '78. Because he was part of the re- his his family was the one that negotiated the original impasse ordinance. Correct? Yes. Uh, us too. We were we were really shocked because I mean. His family d- gave the MPA their building. I mean, where our offices are was a, was owned by a Ford that donated the building to the Memphis Police Association after the strike was over. So, yeah, we we were kind of shocked that he wasn't in our corner. Well, but, you know, I think the biggest thing is, is it's it's so far removed from everybody now. Like, there's almost no one in a position of authority down there that was around for the 1978 strike. No one out there that's in a position of authority remembers what that did to the city and what it was like. I mean, you can take a clipping out of the newspaper and you can see, you know, what happened with actual, you know, words from the newspaper. But if you talk to the people who were a part of it, some of the guys that are retired now, they can say it wasn't good for anybody. You know, even the even the firemen, the police officers that went on strike, they felt like they had to. But they said, you know what, it really was bad for the city. But we had no other option. Uh, You know, it's it's not something that anybody wants to do. Absolutely. You You just don't want to keep getting railroaded over and over and over by a city administration who... Don't want to stand behind you. You know, now I tell them every week, and you guys, I, I commend you because I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do the job because there's no way I would run out there and be in the way, take a bullet for somebody who all they were going to do is if the person who shot me was getting arrested and you bumped their head on the door, file a lawsuit against you right, I, right. or or be mad at you because you shot their relative who was trying to kill nine people. Like I, I wouldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I'd be on the take the first week. That's why I'm not a cop. 
<laughs> the first scumbag drug he dealer. Says it all the time. The first okay. scumbag drug dealer I pulled over with forty grand in the trunk. Mm -hmm. I'd turn in eight dollars <laughs> and be like, "Look, I got him, y'all. I got him." I got him. So <laughs> you said, Anthony, we have a caller. Are, yeah. you, are you willing to? You want sure, to? Yeah, yeah, okay. Take a call. They hung up. Uh, they hung oh, up. Yeah. Okay. He had a question uh, for the gentleman mentioning about the ten days uh, that you all they have to dispute it. Uh huh. Right. Versus uh, ninety. You know, why can't they take ninety days? Right. Okay, so Timothy's what, question yeah. was about the ten days versus the ninety days. 90 days. Versus the ninety days. That's that's just how the the proposed repeal uh, was written up. Uh, you know, I, I don't I don't know. I can't explain any of why they want to do this. Can we ever <laughs> so, explain right. why they do it? No, I know why. I know why. Streamline the whole thing because we've got thirteen unions. Right. right in the yes. city. Right. Yes. All right. If they have ten days, you can't get thirteen individual people to get together in ten days and right. figure out anything. Much That's less true. thirteen representative entities. Right. Whereas if you've got three people that are running a common goal down at city council who have to see each other every week anyway, right. they can work it out no problem. Well, so yeah. does that mean that the if it's one impasse, is, is it still thirteen different? Con or would you all have to? No, we would all have to get together and, and make every union. Every all every thirteen union. unions would have to make their proposed changes to the budget proposal uh, in ten days. To, in ten days to this one three person committee, and that one three person committee has to consider all thirteen unions when they make their recommendation to full council. So yeah, that each having an individual con committee available to consider each individual union's problems, issues, situations. No, would no longer exist. So, well, I mean, look at it like this: the city has thirteen councilmen and the mayor. How many people are actually in a position of authority at the MPA? How many run it? There's three full time, and right. then during negotiations, we are we have a team of eight on the, the negotiation team. So during negotiations, there's eleven full time down so there. So you've got okay. eleven. The fire department has about six total. Right, and and so you can't battle. With 400 lawyers on retainer. They, they took a whole a building last time at the university. Uh, Timothy called back. I was going to let Timothy before we lose him again. Timothy, are you there? Oh, I am here, yeah. My phone not functioned. It got wet, and all of a sudden, uh, you guys were gone. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, but go ahead. We're here now. All right. I have a question regarding, uh, the, I guess, the business rules between we, the people, and the uh, uh, city. When you said you only get 10 days to uh, contest their budget, how many days do they get to provide the budget? For example, if they get 90 days, how come you guys don't get 90 days to contest? It's not like uh, they're the biggest horse in the race and all you get to do is run. Right. You have a chance to win. Well, I want to know why you only get 10 days if they get 90 days. That's I, my whole question. Right, and I, and we feel the same way. I mean, the, the mayor will, if the, the budget proposal has to be made by March 1st, that gives him the, the entire month of January and February to prepare the budget. Pretty much the whole oh. year. <laughs> right, sure. He could start, you know, as soon as the fiscal year starts in July, he could start preparing the budget for the next fiscal year then. But, uh, well, the, why, why, the, uh, why the, would... Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, the the budget has to be passed by July first. That's the first day of the fiscal year. So, um, the 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 premise that they're making this proposal under is they want to streamline the process to so that we're not going right up to July first every year like we typically do. Uh, but well, this, that, that, this, go ahead. That streamlining gives them the greatest of advantages because you guys need to you know it's like combat. Sure. You know that's what they want. Are you guys going to be the three hundred and a million are coming? And right. uh, you have to, you know, hold the pass. That's not right. And this pro do th this proposal, do Tim, it uh, it doesn't only streamline; it just guts the process. I mean, there is no process. There's the legs no right from under the table. There's no negotiation. There's no back and forth. There, there is no process with this proposal. Okay, then the city council needs to realize that they are uh, instituted in that uh, uh, office by we the people, and we the people are the ones that want to say, hey, if it's going to be a level uh, playing field and you're going to spend our money, we want every opportunity to look at every place you're going to spend our money and for whatever reason, and it's not your business to tell us how long we take. How long you take and how long we take has got to be equal because we provide you funds and office and legitimacy. So I, I'm just really, really, really upset with that. The gist that we got from them, them is that they're trying to be lazy about the whole situation. I, when one person complained saying, I sat on six impasse committees last year, and it's just it just takes too much time. we got to go back and forth. we got to do all this. Why do we have to go back and forth? We approve the budget as the council. Why would we have to go back and forth? That's what we're getting from them. Oh, they well, have I'm to do their job? I know. Yeah, exactly. they got to do I'm their job. About that. It's not their funds. It's not their money. It's not their building. We pay for the toilet paper. It's us. If they're going to represent us, 
they're going to be equal to us because we didn't put them in office to be better than us. And they have to respect the fact that we're the people. They're the servant. And we're, they need to get it into their head hard or soft or in, in whatever capacity they can understand that we're the people and they're not. We love that idea, Tim, and, and be sure to to voice that opinion to City Hall. Uh, right. We've got several events coming up uh, that I hope you can can participate in. On March seventh is the next the second reading of this impasse propo- proposal. It's already passed once, um, the first reading. So it's got to pass three readings to become law. So uh, March seventh is second reading. Uh, it's we anticipate it to be on consent agenda like it was first reading, which means we can't speak on it, but we can certainly sit and hold signs and voice our opposals. You can't speak on it. No, we can't speak. We haven't been able to, to speak yet. We. I thought each person could speak on each item on the agenda. We can if we if we want to wait till the end of the meeting. They'll allow us to speak, but the vote will have already happened by that point. Right. So uh, you know, it. I, I don't know. And the consent agenda has more than five to six different items on it, and they just streamline that thing on through there. I consider myself very well versed in what's going on at City Hall, and this is news to me. Right, they're, right. They're, they're keeping it real quiet. And my blood pressure just shot through the roof, and you just know, I, <laughs> yes. what? Yes, yes. This is, these are so many people's livelihoods that I, are in taxpayer money. Just... I know, yes. So Okay, let me say this. Go ahead, Tim. Uh, I, thank you. I'm a vet, Vietnam, 67, 68. Yes. I can't tell you how angry I am with the administrative bureaucracy, whether federal, state, local, or county, and they want to pretend that they're the ones. They are not the ones. We buy the windows they look out of. We pay for the water in their building, the electricity, the heat, the warmth. I mean, it's us. Yes. And they need their asses kicked big time and hard. The problem. They have to realize. The problem that we get. I love you, Tim. I love you. I'm I'm with you, Tim. The problem. I guess I've said enough. I I didn't mean to say asses, but I'll say this. The problem that we get, Tim. Also, Tim, you got you got to think about this, man. You got to think about in. So many different districts inside of the city, there's very minimal voting. So they're they're winning these these people that we're putting in in the office. They we don't know if they're competent enough to do the job or not. And the fact well, of the matter is, they're just being placed up there, and there's very minimal people out there voting. We got to get out they're there. They're being and placed. Vote. They're being placed. We got to vote. The Orange Mound, three percent of their people voted in that area. You got we got to vote. That's the problem. Yeah. I mean, Tim, you said it, and I wish we could just clone you, brother, because you can get 40,000 people to show up for the release of the new Nikes, but you can get eight people to show up at a voting booth when it's really time for right. to decide how to spend their money. They have no idea, what's they have going no on. idea what they're doing. Well, I, I don't leave my house except for groceries and dog food. And uh, <laughs> I, sit, I, I, so I'm not going to be that guy, the next guy at the meeting, but I will say this. If it gets down to total degradation, of uh, local government. I'm a Second Amendment citizen, dude. I got a rifle, I got a pistol or two, and I got, uh, you know, bullets. Okay. <laughs> oh. All right. Okay, I'm not Jim. looking for that. I'm not looking for that. I'm wow. not looking for that. But, that, yeah. that but he's angry. He's telling you he's angry. Absolutely. He's angry. And I think a lot of people feel the same way, Tim. And uh, mm-hmm. we, well, and we're gonna. We don't want it to come to that either. So uh, what we're what we're well, hoping. Uh, we don't need to start over from right. scratch. Right. Okay, dude. Uh, Thanks for uh, calling, man. To you and the lady. Thank Thanks you very right. much. This is a great program. I'm a uh, a veteran. I'm also a uh, teamster, uh, retired. And I'll tell you this: uh, um, labor built this nation, not management. Management never got their hands dirty. They smoked cigars and had cognac and looked out of the windows while it was all being done. I don't care if we're Chinese or Indians or Americans that needed jobs. They didn't build this nation. We did. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. sir. Well, thanks for calling, Tim, and thank you for your service being a veteran. Appreciate it. Thank Thank you. you. I I listen every weekend. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. We're going to go ahead and take a pause real quick, get the sponsors paid, and when we come back, if you have uh, any questions, you're more than welcome to call back in. What's the number? I never can remember the number. 260-5926. That's a big sign right there on the ceiling. (laughs) Watch your mouth. I got my man Mike Strickland in here. I am, I am, you know, hey, uh, it's like a free and me. Daddy, it's seeing my mommy. Let me get you some help. Dispatcher, I have a domestic disturbance in progress. I have no cars available. All units are on other calls. My mommy's on the floor bleeding. Since 2013, 346 officers have left the Memphis Police Department. That's 346 fewer officers available to respond to calls for help like this one. 
Stand up, Memphis. Tell the mayor and the city council to support our police department. Welcome back, guys. And um, again, if you're just joining us, the number is 260-5926. And uh, in the studio with us today, we have Vergala. And we have uh, Matt and Justin from the MPA negotiations team. And uh, Matt, there are some events coming up that we do want to make sure that we know about. Because uh, if you're citizens or and you want to get involved, you want to you know show your support to not only the MPA, but there's, this is a collective effort, is it not? Absolutely. All 13 unions are participating in the fight against this impasse repeal. Uh, we have a rally coming up on Saturday, March 18th. Uh, it's going to be at Poplar and Highland from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, we would love for anyone that supports any union in this city, not just the police, but police, fire, sanitation, the uh, signal maintenance folks, anybody uh, that wants to come out and stand and hold a sign and, and show the city that uh, that they they are against the, repealing the uh, the negotiation process with the, the employees of the city, please show up and uh, make your voice heard. And um, we have a, another question from a caller, and before because we're going to jump into the the uh, retention thing that the mayor proposed, but we're going to let yes. him get his question in first, so we All can. Right. Uh, Chris, you're on. Hey, how y'all doing today? Good. Hi, how Chris. are you? Good. All right. Uh, well, I'll, first, I wanted to ask a question uh, concerning. Uh, I think Terry Rowland is uh, looking to run for county mayor. Uh huh. And if that's true. Uh, I wonder, uh, does anyone feel that uh, he would have a push to have a constitutional sheriff? You know, your constitutional sheriff, which we've been pushing for, is, you know, say if um, some non, uh, an NGO or something comes in and and um, they say, well, you got a pond on your, your land and uh, da-da-da, we want to do this. And, and the constitutional sheriff would be able to, say now hold on a second this is the property owner you can't do you can't tell this property owner what to do with this property uh the constitutional sheriff is very vital uh towards the sovereignty of any county or any municipality and uh does anybody feel like uh that terry Rowland would steer that way and i just wanted to i wanted to point something out about mlg and w and the opt-out letter uh, it's not what people think. So, but uh, if you could answer that first question first, I, I, that I don't know. I have uh, I have not heard him. I mean, I know that uh, Terry's for a lot of things, but I've never heard him say anything like that. Right. I I can't speak for what Terry Rowland would or wouldn't do. Now, all all I really know to to tell you, Chris, is that I know by Tennessee state law that each county is required to have a sheriff already. We have one here in Shelby County that the sheriff's department works in conjunction with the police department. Uh, but the city of Memphis offers its own police department to take care of law enforcement services inside the city. Uh, so I, you know, I'm, I'm not, I can't really speak on anything outside that other than, uh, I'm, I, I have no idea what Terry would do if elected. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I just wanted, to, I just wanted to give a quick update. Um, uh, we finally had the time the other day to call MLG and W to get the opt out letter and what they, <laughs> they were vehemently, uh, they said, well, our system won't allow us to send you the opt out letter until you get a notice that Apex is coming to install any of the meters. And I said, well, you know, it's been proven that the notices are not going out and Apex is just showing up and they're just putting meters on houses. And they, and they vehemently said their system, well, I said, your system, I don't care about your system, you're a human being. You can go and get that letter and mail it to me. And they absolutely will not. So now you, you can't call and get them to mail you the letter ahead of time. You have to wait till either the meter is installed or you get the notice, then you have 30 days to respond. And so what this is, they are just, uh, they're forcing it upon you, 
and then you have to take action afterwards. But they absolutely vehemently said they cannot send the opt-out letter beforehand. Well, I know that we have a councilman coming in today for the IBEW show. That would really be a good thing to bring up to him. Definitely. So I just I just wanted to give everybody an update right, on thank that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chris. Um, Thanks, Chris, and for calling. So, um, and, you know, definitely, um, you know, I, I live in the county, but, you know, ladies and gentlemen, think about what the world would be without a police force and the way that this city is treating the, uh, the officers of Memphis. Uh, what if nobody wants to sign up and be an officer? What are you going to have then? Right. And that's, you know, it's really sad to think that, you know, government doesn't see, um, does not see that the way that they're treating officers and, and the way that they're, they're treating city employees, well, then why would anybody come to work for right. them? I and think that's so what they're seeing now, Chris. I think it's it's gotten to the point that they're having a real tough time getting I'm, anybody to come here. And I'm glad Chris brought that up because that right. leads into what we're, we're wanting to talk about, was, which is the mayor's retention plan is what he brought in. Right. Absolutely. And, and let's, all, let's all be there on the 18th. I'm yes, planning sir. on it. It's on Good. Saturday. It's at, uh, it starts at 11 a.m. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's, let's be there and let's let the city of Memphis know, hey, you know what? You're... you're your city employees are important yep. um, because there are a lot of them to do a, that do a lot of good work. I have a neighbor who works for MLG and W, and if I ever have a question, he's able to answer it for me. You know, um, I had a question about, hey, where's my gas line, and uh, I need to build a drainage ditch or whatever, and and he told me, he said, you know, you got to be careful about this or that. So, you know, these are very valuable people, and ladies and gentlemen, let's show up on the 18th. Um, and let's let's be there and let's rally together. Thank Thanks, you so Chris. much. Thanks. Uh, Regala, you have. Y'all have a good day. You too. Sure. Thank you so much. You have what's sitting in front of you, the mayor's retention policy, right? We're going to let you speak because we know my, my students are always so polite. They just don't jump in. <laughs> <laughs> what you got there, Regala? <laughs> well, this is the mayor's retention plan that he proposed on Monday before he even came to talk to the MPA, correct? Correct. Correct. And, that's no, correct. Yeah, that's, yeah that's, okay. is that, that's the... Okay, so yeah, the the six point one million dollar grant that we that y'all knew nothing about, correct? We didn't know anything about it until it was announced on the news. On what does that article on, say that it, the grant is? Does it say what all the retention stuff is for? Um, it does. Yeah. Okay, it says, with the grant money, the city will offer officers with 3 to 11 years on the force a retention bonus ranging between $6,400 and $7,000 over four years if they commit to staying in Memphis for that time. Any officer would receive a $2,000 bonus through the grant if they refer a candidate to the Memphis Police Training Academy, and that candidate graduates and joins the department. Mayor Strickland said that the grant will broaden recruiting efforts in general. The goal is to increase the force from 1,970 officers to 2,300 by 2020. Yes. So so then they're negotiating individual contracts with each officer is basically what has just happened. That's correct. But what does the what does the state law say about that? Because yeah. Essica had a... Essica had a uh, Y'all had a, uh, an actual press conference this week, and we did. Where, where Essica uh, mm-hmm. led the press conference, correct? Correct. And she mentioned something about this. On right on Tuesday, as, as after we were able to digest and kind of analyze what was proposed by the mayor, uh, you're absolutely right. He's he's asking officers if they want to participate in this bonus retention program to sign a four year contract, obligating themselves to work for the city for an, at least additional four years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that. That to sign a contract with an individual officer specifically, but violates our MOU, our current current contract. Not necessarily city. state law, because this is a right to work state. So okay, you right. do have the option. Uh, so, okay, okay, <clears throat> Article Three. All right. The city recognizes the association as the designated bargaining representative for commissioned officers of the police service division of the city of of city of Memphis, holding permanent status within the bargaining unit as defined in Article four for the purposes of conferences and meetings on wages, hours of and conditions of employment to the full extent and authority provided by the charter and ordinances of the city of Memphis and the law of the state of Tennessee. So that that our MOU specifically states right there that they if they're going to enter into a contract determining wages and terms of employment, mm-hmm. they must consult the MPA on it. Uh, 
we're, let, let me make it clear. We're, we are by no means upset with the fact that they want to give the police department $6 million. Right. If, the, <laughs> if, if, they want, if they want to give officers money, that's fantastic. We're all for that. Uh, but they shouldn't, you shouldn't have to sign a contract to get it, uh, mm-hmm. and especially outside our, our current MOU. And I'm just going to make a side note, you know, just from my observation, um, the contracts that you guys had before and that my family fell under for one of the other unions – was not honored. So why would we sign anything? And I've had officers tell me, I said, are you going to, you, you going to do this? Well, no, why would I sign anything? They've the no, they've is trying to get young officers. to yeah. Right. And that's exactly, I think what the newer officers that come in that don't maybe not even realize what's happened in right. the past and how this is going to impact them ultimately right. uh, is that's exactly what they're doing. They're trying to undermine. Them. You got to first let them know about the impasse orders and what they're trying to do and get, and get this passed so quickly. And then at the same time, resolving the unions. Right. Or the associations. Because, I mean, it, it is easy, and I, I tell this to my students all the time, once you get further away from a, 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 a catalytic, a, you know, a, a moment that catalyst to some, I lost my train of thought there. But anyway, you know, the, when in the 78 strike, you know, right. I was born in 77, so I would have no recollection of what happened here. So the farther we get away from that moment, right. you know, it's easier to say, well, that, you know, that wasn't really that big of a deal. Well, no, it was a big deal. If you go back and deal. look at, the, I mean, the National Guard came in. Yes. It was not a pretty picture. And now we are, you know, in the top of the most violent cities in the United States. We don't want to repeat that. And, you know, that they're not talking about that, but we don't want to see history repeating itself. Right. And the MPA is not on here saying that. I'm just saying we... We as citizens don't want to see that again, and so we need to be encouraging our mayor and city council to make sure that they take all the steps they need to do to make sure that something like that doesn't happen again. Do not Absolutely. repeal impasse. And it, it's it's just as simple as is. No, they they for some reason they don't want to. It doesn't seem that they want to address or, or include the MPA. Um, you know, it, if if could you have to, something to do with those billboards, I may, guess. Sure. <laughs> but I mean, if you're if you're wanting to know. What would keep a police officer around, or what would encourage a police officer to come work here? Why not ask a police officer? Not, right. not uh, hire, you mean those studies? Right. Have they asked any of the police officers in those studies? By the way, no. Like like I said, the first we heard about this this retention bonus program was Monday afternoon, and apparently it had been in the works nine, nine months. Mo- mm-hmm. And and they've never consulted the MPA a single time in that nine month period. And I did since I, I threw it in there because there are some people upset about the billboards. I, since you guys are sitting in here, I wanted to because they always blame Mike Williams. Was it Mike <laughs> Williams that did the billboards? Please let me make that clear as well. No, the the uh, the MPA's public relations committee, which is a committee of members, board members from from the uh, union, they came up with those billboards. So no, it wasn't Mike Williams. Uh, She's even got a billboard article there. Look. <laughs> you have a question about it, Regella? Go ahead and ask. Um, so, who put the signs up? That's what she was. Yeah, he was just so. Right. So the 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 content of the sign, the message that's on the sign, was right. come up with by the PR committee. Okay. The Memphis Police Association paid for the contract to put those signs up okay. around the city. Okay. So they were paid for by the MPA, but the PR committee came up with the content of the sign. Okay. And, my and, one question was: Do you think that they accomplished the purpose that they were put up for? I think I think they did, and a lot of people. I've had a lot of people ask, "What was the point of the sign? We don't really get it." Well, okay, it's number one. City Hall would like nothing better than to just sweep the the way crime is getting out of control right. under the rug. So much so, so that they're going to redefine it. Right. right. So that so that keeps it in in the news, it keeps it on the forefront. Mm-hmm. And then in addition to that, it keeps the uh, the conversation going about what needs to be done to fix it. Right. And Okay. My question, just for clarification, is there anything on the billboard that was not factually based? No, everything on there was two. It, it said 228 homicides in 2016, and that's that's a fact. In fact, that number's gone up a mm-hmm. few because there were some people that were injured, shot, stabbed during 2016 that mm-hmm. died after the first of the year. So that, I think that number's actually grown by one or two. Yep. And then, uh, and then there we are well down down well over 500 officers below our mm-hmm. our desired complement of and there's even hospitality on there. Y'all said welcome to Memphis. I mean, you you were nice about it. <laughs> yes, big bowl letters. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, so I I do want to make that clear about the billboards that one because it, sometimes the media makes it sound like it's a there's this match between Mike Williams and Jim Strickland and there there's a war waging because of the mayor. That's not what happened here at no. all. And so no. to to make it sound like that because I think one of Mike's guests actually talked about a cage match. <laughs> the mayor Strickland and I was like, you know, Mike, I. I 
pay to go to that. Well, <laughs> I'd, I'd go to that. You that. <laughs> I, would, I would go to that. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, no, this is not a this is not a personal thing. Mike did not do this. This no. was the committee that did this. Right. I, the the media loves to to play on that aspect of it that they were mayoral opponents in the election in 2015, mm-hmm. and uh, and no, the, the, it, it's not a personal vendetta by any stretch of the imagination. The, the Memphis Police Association's goal, the purpose for its existence, is to improve the working conditions of its of right. its members, uh, which are the. 1,832 police officers that are members of the, of the MPA. So what we're trying to do is is to make sure they're financially sound in retirement. We're trying to make sure that their spouses have health care coverage. Mm-hmm. Um, we're trying to make sure that they have a, a viable retirement uh, income, such as a pension. Uh, so, you know, that that's why we're here. That's right. that's what we do. So, uh, you know, in addition to making sure that, that our officers are uh, – are investigated and disciplined fairly on the job. Uh, right. You know, it, it, the MPA covers a gamut of um, of responsibilities that, and it's and when we speak out against the city, it's to ensure the fair treatment of our members, not to a personal vendetta against Mayor right. Strickland. Right. And I'm glad you brought up the families because if you wouldn't, I would have pointed it out that the um, all of the unions actually don't just. I mean, yes, the due paying member and the employee is the person that has you know that is represented under there, but ultimately you guys are out there fighting for uh, me the spouse of you know like my my exactly. husband's union is fighting for, and it, and our children and so that our children don't have to take care of us in our retirement as we're starting to see and um you know we just ha- i don't know if y'all heard we had one of the retirees that we talk about a lot on um on the show and he's publicly said this so i feel and you know the one that the news highlighted that gets seven dollars a month when he's left right. you know after paying his health care he just got diagnosed with a very very bad illness oh. and it's and he he got on our negatively affected page and said, well, thanks, Mayor. Now I've got this, too. So he's got $7 a month left over out of his paycheck after wow. he pays for health care. And now, you know, depending on what he got from one exchange, is he even going to be able to take, you know, get the treatment that he needs, that he needs right. for and take and then his but his only concern was he had a pre-existing? my wife. No, he just got diagnosed. I mean, he um, he it was just it was a new diagnosis. So uh, but it was uh, some sort of cancer that has metastasized. And so not only has he got that seven dollar paycheck that, you know, the you know, now we've got this and we we still are trying to work out uh, if you've watched the retirees trying to work out what that new exchange program they don't even know what they have right. the other day they didn't even they went to walgreens to get their prescriptions they didn't right. they said they didn't have insurance coverage right i mean that happened to these retirees who rely on this medication and they were told by the pharmacies that i'm sorry your the city of memphis didn't pick up uh you know drug char uh, dr- drug coverage right wow Right, and what we're seeing is, uh, is in addition to that, not only is coverage reduced and, and premiums gone up, we're we're seeing annual deductibles gone up. We we're seeing new deductibles for for prescriptions for pharmacy prescriptions. Uh, so yeah, it's you know it's, it's every every facet, every angle that that they can they can hit you, they're coming at you. Right. So I was just you know <clears throat> I wanted to point that out that while yes they are here representing the officers, it's not only them they're fighting for. It's their spouses, their children, and, and you know and even grandkids because again when you get put in that situation where you can't take care of yourself financially who do you think picks up that burden right, right. i mean so ultimately that's what y'all are here fighting for so thank you for that as well so i just wanted to point that out because a lot of people just say oh they're just fighting for the officers no we're talking about livelihoods and families here right. that we're fighting right. for so and the, the whole city of memphis right I mean, <laughs> right you really think about the whole big picture because they took this all away from everybody right yeah you know? the, yeah we you know we we focus a lot on the police and fire because that's the our reality right but every city employee got hit with this yeah. and we're just the most vocal of the ones and and the reality of that is some of them don't have unions and they yeah. can't be as vocal as we right. can be well, the unions are very small right you and know. So, uh, you know, yes, we, we don't ever mean to take away from the other unions that got hit by this. It's just we, we have a tendency just to be more vocal because this is our reality. And, you know, but there are several other employees, thousands of employees that got hit with this. And so. the reality, reality of being a police officer, you know, we're going to fight till the death. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, you know, what what appalled me, you know, and I don't know if this is still the case. I would hope not that the coverage for like line of duty disability, y'all got three years right. and then the yeah, were. Th- tossed aside right is that still the case it is three years it's uh it 
the way I understand it now is that it's reevaluated after three years, and then it's uh, reevaluated. Yeah, so you so. take a bullet, because <clears throat> uh, uh, the story that I got from one was that you know someone got shot in the head and he had could, he could not work anymore, and continuous surgeries. Okay, that's permanent. Right. That's not going away. That's mm-hmm. permanent. Right. You know. So why would we re- that? It's known, but that's that's not going away. Why would there be a reevaluation? You give right. your health and your youth to the city, they should be obliged to take care of you. And that's 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 my opinion. Mm-hmm. But I would think if you're willing to take a bullet for the city. The city should honor, especially you know. when you're hired on with that guarantee. Right, right. that's that's right. a big thing. Yeah, we now, were talking about there's a contract here. Right, you know that now that they, they they these were these are these are items that were promised to us when we hired on at least right. most. Now the, we, there are some extremely junior officers on the job now that they came on the job knowing what they had, and that's but, a little you know, bit different. Right, that is you, a little bit different because you you've. You know, you, you're, you're changing the rules of the game for in players the, that are done. In the middle of the game, right, exactly. You can't do that. Yeah. You know, you got 80-year-old people that rely on this, and they can't go back right. to work. And no. I, and, and <laughs> Let I understand. me get back in the car. <laughs> Let me get back in the car. And I understand that, that uh, there, there are those citizens out there going, God, you're just whining. You know, you, you, you're getting paid already great. You know, you already have – you still have great benefits. Well, okay, l- this is what we're talking about, how it affects the average Joe citizen. Um, if, if you're having – Austin Police Department, for example, offering you ninety thousand dollars a year plus health insurance for your entire family through retirement and a great pension program. Where do you think those police officers that are coming out of college want to go work? Mm-hmm. So you know, if if the city of Memphis does not offer a competitive benefit package, which we're telling them what's going to take to make that package competitive, uh, you know, they're they're going to go elsewhere. Even the officers that are here are going to take the enormous amount of experience mm-hmm. that you gain from working in a city right. like Memphis right. and go elsewhere, and they're being snatched up, which is why we've lost and over five. Some of these cities are offering lateral moves, are they not? They get yes, to keep their exactly. time in. Yeah, I mean, right. that's they get to move over and start this new police department with exactly the amount of time in they had here. They don't have to start over. Just piggybacking on what Matt said, when I came on nine years ago, uh, they were doing that big mass hiring, and people were coming from all over the United States. I had people in my class that were from New York. He left his family. He was a teacher in New York. He left his family up there until he graduated the academy. I got friends from Chicago. I got friends all, from all over the United States that come here and want to be police officers. And that was one of the, they. It was the one of the best things for them. They knew they would get a good right. experience. They knew they were going to get a good pension. We knew that we were not going to become rich from becoming right from being officers in this in this city. But we knew that we would have good benefits and and the honor and the integrity that you gain mm-hmm. from this is just something else. But we're not getting that anymore. We're just yeah. getting barely picking up people from within the region, and then it's very strict for officers on the, where they have to live at. You got to live within the county. You know, mm-hmm. so that that's a real big deal. If this is a tri-state area, then why is it so hard for us to say, well, let's stretch our hands out to Arkansas. Let's stretch our hands, hands out to Mississippi and let them be able to reside right. there, you know. And I got news for the mayor. And, I, you know, you can correct me if, if you think I'm wrong, but, you know, we've got these new officers coming in. They know they're not getting these benefits. Right. We are basically just training Dallas and all of them's next officers. There's no reason for them to stay. And right. we're giving them excellent training excellent. just they're being on everything. the street. Yeah. I mean, I mean, our Everything. officers, you know, you may think that they sit and, walk, you know, go to Dunkin' Donuts. That's just not simply not the case. Not anymore. <laughs> and, and you know, and, and the, you, you no. want to know also for the citizens, uh, say, say if 1978 were to happen all over again for the fire department, you're like, oh, our fire department's OK. Uh, they can't answer a call of the stabbings, shootings, anything. They cannot. A paramedic cannot make the scene until an officer has cleared it to do so. Exactly. So it disables both departments are equally impacted by anything that this you know this does and this is how the citizens of Memphis get impacted absolutely because they they work they, together they lose services is the bottom right. line right the, the the service that they expect to receive due to paying their taxes to the city of Memphis their the the quality is declining just due to a lack of people right did you have any other questions you wanted to ask because I know I, we've just been talking all over you and see they're <laughs> oh, just no, they're no, just no, so, no. they're just so no. my student they're just they've been taught so well they just don't want to oh. interrupt and they just don't jump like jump in <laughs> jump in so did you have any questions or because i know you take a lot in too she's one of my she was at city hall all day that day that you met her at city oh, yeah, hall yes. i remember that I and remember she took that. in a lot she she went to lunch it's like okay i've got all these questions right <laughs> <laughs> so i mean did you have any other questions that you wanted but i wanted to make sure you got them in before we ran out of time um, did it, no. any clarifying questions that you had no, or i'm just gonna put you on the spot <laughs> <or> just <laughs> come on regal so to <laughs> any of our officers out there we're going to tell them make sure that you bring your contract that they are, the city is so haphazardly bringing to you 
bring it to the MPA and let the attorney look over it before you. Yeah, have you sign seen it. any of the contracts? We have not. I went out to a precinct uh, North Main yesterday and talked and spoke with them in regards to it. They had not seen it. Wow. So that's where we're at with that. He's not actually brought any any contracts to the the union itself or the Correct, association. Right. Now he's the 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 proposal. The one handout that we do have. The one thing in writing that we've got that followed the press conference on Monday. Mm -hmm. It says there's going to be an open enrollment period in July. Now, I love those. Yeah, so now <laughs> this is just for the bonus retention program. <laughs> right. But uh, but we, we we got some information yesterday that we weren't able to verify that said that some of the contracts might already be going out to mm -hmm. the precincts. But we we hit five or six different precincts yesterday and no one had seen them yet. So right. so no, we don't know what this contract's going to say. We don't know what, what the details or terms are going to be in there. So we're, we're encouraging if our officers do have a contract placed in front of them we're, we're advising them please don't sign it until you at least bring it to the mpa let our attorneys look at it and so we can at least tell you what you're signing oh that would be an excellent idea you have yeah. no idea what you could be getting yourself into with the city just just knowing from experience reading the budgets and looking at the i just especially uh regala what then when there's somebody that, that apparently signed something in a coma last time we were at oh. <laughs> bill street apparently was acquired by a man who was in a coma the day the contract was signed Are so you kidding me? that happened in committee meetings that, that happened, did it not? I'm not making that up, right? Wow. <laughs> no. She I came in. The wife came in and said, uh, my husband that you say signed this contract with you was in a coma. He couldn't sign this. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that you you might want to have the attorneys look at it before you you sign anything, uh, and I'm <laughs> I'm learning a lot today too. Again, I thought I was pretty well versed in what was going on, and now I'm just a shock. So I know that you know the average person out they're not knowing this kind of stuff, right. and I wow yeah. um, because this is really guys you guys don't understand how detrimental this is to these families, and where if they can come up with a six million dollar grant to do this. Why not some grants to restore some benefits? Because that's what we're telling you. It doesn't take a survey that you've yeah. paid hundreds of thousands of dollars for. Because right. I want to know what employees they ask. Yeah. Because they've had employee after employee say, it's the benefits. It's the ask, benefits. Right. They're not asking. So, we, yeah. The, we, we, uh, we don't, we, at, at least as of right now, we have had so many of our members say, I would rather have insurance for my wife than a raise that we don't even at this time don't have now negotiations aren't over but we don't have a plan at this time to propose any wage increase for us this year we would rather have the benefits back than ask for a pay increase well let's we'll put it in perspective what is the the highest amount of bonus they get seven thousand dollars okay yeah. so my insurance for myself through my employer and this is you know i got carved out was almost six thousand wow. dollars so it pays for one spousal carve out for one year not even a hundred percent so right, like 95 right. percent taken care of right. Right. So that's not, is that really worth it? Is that really a bonus? And w what you have I mean, to you're only going to get $5,000 out of it once you put in that next tax right. bracket. Uh, you're not really going to get out of it. Yeah, because you're you paying it, taxes on that. Then you're right. getting it over four years. you right. got to think about that. That's what a, a, a lot of people may not understand is that these these bonuses, the $6,400 to $7,000 bonuses, are broken into four payments over four years, and they're taxed at a higher rate than your income. So a quarter of the bonus is going to go to taxes right off the top. Mm -hmm. So uh, so it's not even going to replace the spouse or carve out right, at it, all. No. Right. So, uh, you know, it, the we've been told by Mayor Strickland that, that he could restore – Spousal insurance for $6 million. He could restore the officers that have been moved to the hybrid pension program. He could restore them to the pension program for $6 million. Now, this is per year, but, but this is the annual cost that it would take. And then he could restore retirees for $23 million. So if he could come up with $35 million in his budget, then we could put all that back. I promise him we could find it. We've I, already found it several times. So, they just don't listen. So that's that's what, what that's what we're working on. That's what we're working toward. Uh, so uh, well, hopefully... Well, well, we've got a minute left, and I thank you guys for yes, coming. Any you. last any last minute things you want to say? Remind us of the dates again. Y yes, March seventh, second reading. Please be at City Hall with a sign saying be there. "Don't do it." And March Don't do it. March eighteenth is our rally, Poplar and Highland at eleven a.m. Please come and hold a sign. And then the final reading, which is the Do or Die Day, that's March twenty-first. Uh, City Council starts at three thirty that day, mm -hmm. and uh, we have to be there to let them know not to uh, pass that impasse repeal. Young officers, do not sign anything without talking to an attorney. Please don't Be sign strong. that stuff. Until next week, guys, have a great week.
AM 990 KWAM, your news and information station with CBS News updates every hour on the hour. KWAM Memphis. CBS.